Hey you guys, it's me. And you know what's today? Hmm. Today's date is today is hold on Sunday and it's at 8 p.m. And it's time, like I said, it's time for Women's Devotional Bible. Well, it doesn't have to be Pacific, but it could be any Bible. It could be the King version. It could be any kind of version. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. Like I said, I'm doing this like every Sundays. So, let's continue. Now. I wanted to read for the the Genesis when it all begins how God created heaven and earth the beginning oops sorry I'm making it You can pause it if you want to read that. So, it just tells you how the book of Genesis, okay? In the beginning, how it all became before this even happened. So, let's begin. <coughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the, in, the dark, in the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a fence between the waters to separate waters from waters. So God made the fence and separated the waters under the fence from the water above it. I'm sure if I... Oh, no, skip running. Um, so, what was that? Um... It says, I'm going to read this again. It says, God said, let there be a fence between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the fence and separated the waters under the fence from the water above it. And it was so. God called the fence sky and it, there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and gather waters. He called sea and God saw that it was good. The God said, let the land produce vegetation, vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it. According to their various kind, in and it was so. The land produced vegeta ve vegetation plants bearing seeds according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. God said, Let there be lights, the expanse of the sky, to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons. And days and years, and let them be light, and in the expanse of sky to give light on the earth. It was so. God made two great lights, and the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser night to govern the night. He also made the stars, and God said them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night. And to separate light from darkness, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. God said, let the water tend with, with living creatures, and let 
birds fly above the earth across its spans of the sky. So, so God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living um, every living and moving things with which he, which the water tends according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said and said be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the sea let the birds in, in, increase on the earth and there was evening and there was morning in the fifth day god said let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds livestock creatures that move along the ground and and wild animals each according to its kind and it was so God made the wild animals according to their kind, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to, according to their kind. I'm sorry. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let, let us man in our image, in our likeness, let them rule over the fish, the sea, and the birds of the air, over, over the livestock over all the earth and over, and over all creatures and move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. Now this is my favorite part of the Genesis, how God created man like us. <coughs> I'm going to say that again, sorry. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God he created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, increase. Now, let me just stop right here. What I just read about how God created man in his own image, there are people say that, Oh, that we come from an alien. Or some creature. Or we came from monkeys that we look like monkeys yes monkeys have our mind as we usually have that's scientific but no there's no specific reasons why we were created not by man not even uh, uh, um, what you call those things um, hey babe what was that? Uh, cave. Oh, right, cavemen. Cavemen. Um, we not created by cavemen, and we were never created. Um, by nothing an alien. Scientific. Nothing scientific. Sorry. No aliens. No cavemen. Nothing scientific. Yes, my husband. He's gonna join with us. Right here. So hello. Hi. <laughs> So yes, we are Christians. So I just want to tell you about how yes, we are. how how people think that man is created by by monkey or created by cavemen or, or man created man. Oh, mm-hmm. exactly. No such There's thing. There's no such thing. Or the Big Bang theory. No such thing. Right. The Bible is the absolute truth. Genesis one and one, the first paragraph. First verse, mm-hmm. first chapter in the beginning, mm-hmm. the world was without form. This entire galaxy, mm-hmm. as we know it, the universe, mm-hmm. everything is without form. We were in complete darkness until God said, let there be light. And there was light. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. Now, of course, everyone is not going to believe this, but... For those of you who feel lost or feel confused or you feel conflicted in your hearts or in your minds or even more in your spirits, mm-hmm. then you would hear the truth in this word, in God's holy word. That's the point of reading the Bible. Cause yes, it is. If Yes, science, yes we, we when we go to school and we learn science stuff, Yes, we want to know and learn about our bodies and how we form. Like, we have five fingers and five toes, but it doesn't mean that we were born any creature, you know. 
there's no such thing. God created, like I said, well, I just read that passage right here, the, the Genesis 1 and 2, the 27, 27 verse, and it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. See? So he created his own image. You know, there's no Pacific, he created us in there's no his Pacific image. scientific. God created his own mind, his own reflection, his that's, own That's right. Man. He, he created us in his image. In his image. That means how he is, we are also. Mm -hmm. He created man in his mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to continue. So God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase the number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Now you should read, continuing that part. Uh, which verse? Uh, the 29. 29, 29 just, verse. Mm -hmm. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. Now, just that little short paragraph right there. See what we have today? See how fruit grows from the trees and, mm -hmm. you know, different plants from the ground, you know, seeds, you know, that grow from the ground. Things that God allow us to have. If it wasn't just that short passage I read right there, I'll read it again mm -hmm. very quickly. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit. With seed in it, mm -hmm. which we still have yes. to this day. How do you think that we're able to buy yeah. fruit from the grocery store? No, it doesn't just pop up <laughs> mysteriously mm -hmm. after the grocery store. It comes from trees mm -hmm. and the different plants and different things that we need bears a seed from the ground. Mm -hmm. So this is what God gives to us and what He's still yeah. giving to still us. And still to this day, is we. It's not just came from the supermarket, but it produces. Seeds. From the earth, from him. And he gives, you know, the apples has seeds inside, and the 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 watermelon has seeds inside. That's what it's explaining, you know. And then it that's how it on produces, yeah. In the thirtieth, and mm -hmm. to and to all will be yours for food. Oh no no, oh. excuse me, <laughs> sorry. I need my glasses. <laughs> Please forgive me, y'all. And to all. The beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life, in it I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And that's the end of the first chapter. Mm -hmm. And he even allow the animals to feed from the plants and the seed that mm -hmm. provides food even for the animals because mm -hmm. if the animals die guess what it's a good chance a lot of us would die mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know yeah, that's true. different reasons mm -hmm. um but god allowed them to have life and he made a way for them to eat just mm -hmm. as much as he makes a way for us to eat mm -hmm. and find the nourishment that we need he provided this mm -hmm. genesis 1 and 1 is not just the beginning of the creation of earth but it's also the beginning of what god created within the earth and the advantages that he allowed us to have to survive and mm -hmm. to continue to strive and survive okay you can continue the number two. So we're going to read the, the, the Genesis uh, chapter two. Wait. So Genesis mm -hmm. two. Okay. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all mm -hmm. their vast array. Mm -hmm. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested. So for people... That needs to be corrected because people... People get that twisted there, you know, like, you know, like, you know, uh, how do you explain there was times um, when um, 
on the sep- on the seventh day they said that we all should be sleeping or something like that or yeah on the seventh day you're supposed to work, <laughs> uh, you're supposed to rest go home and chill out you know like that. but not only that you know you're supposed to be in service to the Lord also mm-hmm. you know you should be in a good Bible based church go and worship God right you know mm-hmm. and praise Him mm-hmm. on the Sabbath because it is Sunday. And, and that's then, why people should stop going to work and go straight to church. That's right. That's what. And, you know, for those of you, uh, you, you know, it's an understandable situation for some of you who still have to go to work on a Sunday. But just keep in mind, you know, and pray about it. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's really in your heart where, you know, you want to be in church on Sunday morning, God will make a way. You know, God has a way of making a way out of no way, even if your boys may be mean, you know, who knows, you know, and, but somehow, some way God uses man, you know, to, you know, uh, to open doors, and you may be surprised one day, you might walk into your job, and your boss might say to you, you know what, you wanted Sundays off, I have an opening, I can give you Sundays off, you know, so don't think that, you know, anything right. is impossible because nothing is impossible for God, mm-hmm. especially if it's in your heart to serve God. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, on the seventh day, God rested. Mm-hmm. And that is what we're supposed to do. Rightfully, we're not supposed to work doing on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. You're really not. You know, you go and you go worship the them. Lord. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do on Sundays. But as for working and all of that, you know, still people nowadays are still working, even on the Sundays. And, well. I mean, to each their own, you know, if this is, you know, if it's really important to you or you're one of those people who you're just a workaholic mm-hmm. <laughs> and you like to work. No, because I know some people mm-hmm. like that who just like to work seven days a week, like, you know, or even on their day off, they feel like they have to do something, like some kind of work or something Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my suggestion is to pray on that yeah (laughs) because you know the bible clearly states we're not supposed to you know work on the sabbath and never be afraid of telling your boss you know look you know i'm you know i have a religion and i do believe in jesus and i really want to go to church just be straight honest And, and yes like he said pray because that's what bring you strength you know to tell your boss, like, you know, maybe I should just cut the Sundays off. And then you could still work Mondays and Saturdays and then not work on a Sunday. I mean, people go to, people don't go to work and they still go to Sundays and get their paychecks on Saturday, you know? And, you know? And yeah. Now, like I said before, if it can't be helped, then that's understandable, you know, because you do have to go according to the schedule that you mm-hmm, was given mm-hmm. but what i'm saying is if it really is in your heart because i have heard people's testimonies you know i have heard people you know who had no choice but to work on sundays but then they they started coming to church on mm-hmm. sunday because they really had faith they prayed and you know they were patient and they really believed in god and their boss allowed them eventually you know, some to, uh, for maybe some people. Maybe it's just like changing the time. Take, maybe it could be changing the time and push it a little bit further. You know, yeah. depends on the you church. You never know, right? It depends on what time the church starts, and then and then you might go straight to work after yeah. you finish. Yeah. Now church. some churches, you could do that too. yeah, right. That you could do too because I also know some people who you know come to morning service and then straight after morning service they go to work. So you know, so it. it there's different ways, you know, yeah, you can that you out. can work it mm-hmm. out, you know. But, you know, the overall bottom line is is that God will make a way. You know, mm-hmm. that's the bottom yeah, line, sure. especially if it's your desire and it's in your heart, you know. And you know that you want to be in God's house and worship on Sunday morning. God will make a way, you know. I don't care what it takes or what you have to go through, but, you know. God will make a way, you know, that's just the bottom line. So, yes, on the Sabbath day, Mm -hmm. which is the seventh day, which is Sunday, you know, after God finished creating the heavens and the earth on the seventh day, he rested. 
And um Yeah, you gotta continue. Yes, yeah, so I'll continue. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. See, just brings back the original point that me and her were discussing. And um because on it he he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Mm -hmm. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth and no plant of the field had yet sprung up for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth and there was no man to work the ground but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And the man became a living being. Now, there is how we were created. Man was created. And it clearly states right here, out of the breath of God's nostrils, I repeat it again. There was no man to work the ground, but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed the man from the dust. Now we are dirt. Came from the dirt. Yeah. That's that's what we are. Now, some of you who don't want to hear that, you want to accept this, but that's just the fact of what it is. When like when die, people when people die and we get cremated, what happens? It turns it to turns dust. dust. So for all you deep folk out there who's just thinking, well, I'll get cremated. I don't have to get that in the uh, well, casket. Is, but is burnt. They'll burn, and your whole body, your flesh your will burn, and it it turn into uh, dirt. Yeah, and it That's turns into dirt. It's so, like powder. Yeah, so. If you've ever seen an urn or you've ever I've seen it. it, I've seen it, I have, I have, so you know what we're talking about. Yeah. And for those of you who choose to get buried in the ground, same rules apply. You know, um, the different uh, bugs of the earth or whatever, the different things in the ground comes in, eat up your flesh, but still your, your flesh deteriorates yeah, slowly. Does, yeah. Mm -hmm. until dust where if you look back in the casket after i don't know how long but yeah. all the flesh mm -hmm. is gone and there's nothing left but your skeleton bones mm -hmm. that's about it but same thing applies whether you're cremated or buried from dust we we came and from dust we will return so this is um we will continue because I can't go long but okay we'll so do a I'm gonna finish up yeah so we'll I'm, do that little part there and then we'll do the second one okay second so then I'll finish up this little part here from the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being so I'll stop right there all right you guys I hope you enjoy it. I want to do a part to one stay tuned.